This white owned boba brand was trying to raise money from Asian investors and it kind of blew up in their face. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's run the clip. Talking about bubble tea, that trendy sugary drink you are queued up for and you are never quite sure about its content. Those days are over with boba. Hang on, hang on. I, I'm quite sure about its content, but, yes. but continue. Okay. Yeah. We have transformed this beloved beverage into a convenient and healthier, ready to drink experience. Did you like this? Um, I, I thought it was fine, yeah. but I, but I, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about this idea of disrupting or disturbing bubble tea because it's something that's Why? very. Why there can near. be new takes on things? Sure, Nothing but I'm looking not, at not I'm, everything I'm looking has to at be these traditional. Two guys. No, but then there's also an issue of cultural appropriation. There's an issue of taking something mm. that's very distinctly Asian in its identity and and quote unquote making it better, which I have an issue with. But I want to hear the pitch before I formulate an opinion. And oh boy, so that's uh, that's one that. way to start. Oh, that's yeah, that's <laughs> one way to start. A little heavy there, <laughs> but okay. But it's not an ethnical product anymore. Not with the popping bobas. So we took the, the the version, the Asian version, and we made it with the fruit, with juice. Boom, man! So that happened on the Dragons Den on Canadian TV. Ugh. Let's run some of the responses. Let's not cross that line. Let's let's disagree with each other. Let's crit, you know, let's critique each other. Let's critique this idea of cultural appropriation. Let's talk about it. But you know, what we're not going to do is threaten people's physical safety and make make people feel unsafe and 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 cause them, you know, uh, trauma that quite honestly they 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 don't deserve. Hi everyone, Dragon Menji here. Last week's episode had a pitch from entrepreneurs about boba tea that has sparked a big conversation. After more reflection, due diligence, and listening to many of your opinions, I will not be investing in boba tea. Having said that, I had to turn off commenting on my platforms because it is never okay to send hate and death threats to the entrepreneurs. Bubble tea. Trendy, sugary drink you are queued up for, and you are never quite sure about its content. I am quite sure bubble milk tea's contents are bubble milk and tea. Those days are over with Boba. Boba is a company of non-Asians using the name Boba to sell the drink that came from Asians. It's not an ethnical product anymore. There can Near. be new takes on things. We don't need new takes on which end of the Boba straw to suck on. We have transformed this beloved beverage into a convenient and healthier ready to drink experience. Preservatives, not healthy. Red dye, not healthy. Alcohol, not healthy. It's not healthy. It's not innovative. It's just whiter. Oh my goodness, man. White people, Baba. Baba causing all the controversy. Yeah, also they got an alcoholic one, so I don't really know if how that's healthier. But anyways, guys, we're gonna get into this because it obviously raises a big question about what is cultural appropriation in 2024? Obviously, non-Asian people or people not of a culture can serve a product of another culture, absolutely. But what are the requirements when going into it and what mistakes did they make? So we're going to talk about it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hop Hop Boys. By the way, check out Small Less Sauce on Amazon. I vote, and I always say this, it's an Italian-inspired Chinese chili oil, giving reverence to the Italian cuisine. And you know what the key is there? Like, even with Smala, it's like half Italian, half Sichuan, you know, whatever the percentages are, however you perceive it. It's like you're giving props to the originator. Yep. And that is what Baba was not doing. Mm. Baba was actually like low key sneak dissing the Taiwanese or the, the whatever culture that they're, they they were basically like, you know, those sugary drinks that you don't know what is in them because maybe they come from a people you don't know, you don't trust. But us, you know us, you know like how we look, you like how we trust. And then basically, I felt like Simu was completely in the right of having his response. You know, however he chose his words, for sure, you know, there's some movement there. But like, Simu was right. Yeah. I mean, overall, if you're asking whether I agree with Simu or not, the points Simu made and the questions he raised, completely real. And I think Simu has always done a good job of speaking out about things. I think some people have criticized Simu on that side, saying, oh, like, why you say it that way or blah, 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 whatever. Regardless, he's speaking his mind, he's keeping it real, and he's always been uh, riding for the Asian community, so I always appreciate it. And I think that he raised legit questions. Now, obviously, I think a question is like, when can a, a non-Asian person serve an Asian thing? 
right? Right. I think like Boba's been around for 40 years. How long is it before it becomes like public IP, like beer or something right. like that? Or is it really the wording? Because my opinion is a non-Asian person can serve Asian food. There's a lot of non-Asian chefs out there. There's, there's non-Asian sushi chefs. There's non-Asian, but they show reverence first. They say, I love the food. Mm. I love the culture. You just got to say it first. And these people came on the scene and said, you know, it's, it's, you don't know what's in the contents of the original thing. This is super trendy and sugary. Okay, first of all, it is sugary. That is a fact. But you don't go out and say that right away. And then you say, oh, this is a healthier, more convenient version. And then the guy went on to say, well, you know, it's not really an ethnical product anymore. We took the Asian out, essentially, is what he said. Yeah, and, and let's be honest. He's probably saying we took the Chinese, Taiwanese, you know, I mean, the Western world is going to see that as one thing. We took the Chineseness out of it. Yes. Because... With a Japanese product, let's be honest, people are not going to talk that way about Japanese emanating things. No. I never heard anybody, I never heard a white person come up with a matcha product. By the way, white people, ma matcha was a cha-cha cafe in New York. It's a decent cafe. I like it. But I'm saying they would never diss the originators. Yeah. But anything Chinese or Taiwanese, it gets dissed. Yeah, no. And I, I think it just goes to show you that a lot of the backlash towards the Boba brand and the other Dragon Den uh, investors who were not being as sensitive as Simu, they got dissed on the internet because it was just, again, Asians feeling like, oh, we're overlooked. People can talk down on our products. People can erase us and people don't have to hear our opinions out. Oh, Simu is the biggest star. He's a, the biggest star on that panel. He might not be the richest investor, but he's the biggest star and people are not being sensitive and hearing him out. Like, uh, I think... So Manjit Minhas, who's the Indian businesswoman, all right, she's very wealthy, well done, whatever. Her family runs a Indian-owned brewery. So they make beer as Indians. So of course, in her eyes, maybe she's already been through this conversation where she's like, well, I'm serving beer. So you French Canadians who want to serve boba, fine. That's not a wrong attitude from her perspective, but she's not taking into account all these other factors that boba is a much more younger, newer product literally only blowing up in the past 15, 20 years. It is not really ubiquitous um, that these people framed their product as a better, healthier, just transformed, updated version. Superior. Which, they which view it, it's the wrong way to go about it. Like if someone was pitching some, you know, African-American product and trying to say like, well, you know, we, we innovated on this popular hair product for, for coily hair and it's just way better and cheaper and healthier they would get roasted too, of course. Right, and that's what uh, this Indian comedian was basically pointing out because some I noticed that there are some Indian comedians being like, I don't like this like uh, Manjit Minhas, like Vivek Ramaswamy type of Indian. I'm gonna go with like, you know what I mean? So they, they made a parody with chai tea saying how would people feel like if white people reinvented chai. Mm -hmm. Hello, Sharks. Today I'm asking for $2 million in exchange for 10% of my company, Chai. We all know about chai tea. That weird exotic drink, what's in it? Curry? Probably. Who knows? That's why I created chai. A bottled chai tea without all those weird spices that those people put in it. Oh, I'm sorry, those people? You know, Indians. Um, I love it. I think it's about time we get the chai tea that we can trust. It's not just a third world product anymore. Wait, what? And the best part, it comes in three amazing flavors. Classic brown, lavender yoga, turmeric dysentery. Wow, amazing. We wanted this to be a product that would appeal to Americans. So that's why we have no Indian members on our board. Didn't want them to ruin all the fun. Ruin the fun? So what do you say, Sharks? Want to join Chai and spice up the bottled beverage market? Look, I gotta say, this is so messed up. You're taking a traditional drink and making fun of it, essentially, right? I'm in. You guys got a deal. What the hell? Aren't you Indian? Whoa. <laughs> I'm American. Don't listen to him. Boom! I mean, listen, guys. I'll say this. All right. So I think that we've already covered the incident. I would say in terms of the mismatch, Simu, like you said, is an actor, activist, a venture capitalist. Second, these Canadian venture capitalists, they're trying to project this like, I don't care about anything but the bottom dollar, about the, except the market cap. About, it's all about the money you know, here. It's all about the upside. That's like what I would want to be like, because that's how Americans are. And, you know, I don't know. You guys can be a say or not. Like, I feel like sometimes Canadians, like, try to get the American swag, but sometimes they overshoot it. You know, that swashbucklingness. Wow. And then I'm saying that, like, she, for her to be Indian, to interrupt Simu's objections, being like, you're being sensitive. You're being sensitive. I'll invest. I'll invest. It was a bad look. Yeah, and do you think like there's some sense that like uh, a lot of Indians, they don't 
feel, I'm not saying all Indians, but uh, that a, a portion of Indians do not feel close enough to the East Asian or Mongoloid or East Asian looking struggles that we've been going through. And so that's why she's like not as sensitive about it. She's like, Simu, it's all about the money. You and me, you know, cause, and uh, this Boba thing is fine. You know, cultures are shared. Boom, take it. You're doing a good job. I do feel like their relationship with the West is completely probably different due to British colonization and, and, you know, different people take it different ways. I mean, you have people like Hari Kanabula who would obviously be like super on Simu's side. Uh, uh. And then you have people, I would imagine that Vivek would probably be more on Manjit's side. I don't know. It's tough to say, like, but that's what I believe. Right, right. I and mean, I ultimately, like I said, man, you know what's really interesting about this discussion, Andrew, is that we could have popped up 10,000 comments that are going crazy right now, one-page diatribes in support of Simu, in the middle, against Simu, specifically on Daily Mail and other more, you know, depends on which way each publication leans in the comments section. But it's like, it's very interesting that so many people got up in arms about this, isn't it? Like, multiple people sent this to us and said, you guys got to talk about this. Yeah, well, it's funny because I think Boba... The rise of Boba actually coincides kind of with the rise of Asian Americans in media this past 15, 20 years. And Boba getting more popular, I'm not, it, it corresponds. I don't think it's the causation for it, but it totally corresponds with the rise of Asian Americans in media, you know, the past 20 years like that we've been part of on YouTube. And of course, we've been part of the Boba life. We, we talked about Boba as a significant cultural touchstone of the Asian American community for years. You know? It's almost the next thing after sushi that is starting to get a really big uh, economic boom from non-Asians. Yeah, exactly. And I think that it's really interesting that Boba has become this symbol. Um, yeah, but I, I think overall, like this question of cultural appropriation, I think cultural appropriation definitely exists. And I think that, you know, as we've seen with so many different uh, even restaurants or that Mahjong set from those white ladies or Better Boba, which is another brand out of Portland, Oregon, owned by non-Asians that try to make healthier boba. It's like, guys, just come in there, show reverence to the culture, show reverence to the originators. It's actually super easy. All you got to do is some research, say that you love it, say that it's inspired by that, say what it is, okay, to hedge because... If you put your product out on the world, on the internet, on TV, and you say those things about it, oh, this is the healthier, better, transformed version. It's not ethnic anymore. We took the ethnicity out. That sounds bad. Well, like, sounds what like are you saying? It sounds like you're almost like trying to play into tropes that a lot of minorities do have in their mind. You know, as much as uh, white people have like racist tropes possibly about Asians, our tropes about white people are often that they think they're better, the more advanced race, higher minded, the most enlightened. So anytime they take a product from our culture and they redo it, it's like fixing all the bad parts of it. And they're only, they're the pure good parts. And they completely played into that stereotype on TV. Exactly. Like, exactly. like the other dragons too. Yeah. And uh, I would say this, man, you know, as much as it is a capitalist society where you can start any business, there's no laws barring them from doing boba. They could serve Chinese food, whatever, or like Japanese food. Oh, if they Lucky wanted. Lee's, remember in New yeah, York. Yeah, it's a capitalist society, so that's good, and that's one of the beautiful things about America. But you know what the other beautiful thing about America, David, is? Freedom of speech. And therefore, if you sell something, people get to say something. Right. And they will say what they say. And... There is good reason behind saying what they say. Obviously, they don't deserve death threats. None of that stuff. I think that's an overreaction. But, of course, it's the internet. So, unfortunately, that's going to happen. But if you sell something, people can say something. And what people said was basically like, hey, guys, uh, y'all need to never say that stuff again. And I don't know, you know, whatever your business is going to keep going and stuff. But moving forward, you guys need to show more respect and reverence to the culture that it comes from. You think they destroyed their brand? I think Baba. this hurt their brand more. You know, sometimes being on Shark Tank and not getting a deal, for example, it's like still helps the brand for the exposure publicity aspect. But I don't know if this was really good exposure in any sense because I think it does deter some future investors. So, woo! Uh, when being on TV maybe doesn't help you. But um, anyways, guys, some closing questions maybe for the audience out there. Uh, do you think that Asian business people... Uh, who say they're proud of being Asian should think and keep this in mind more or are they just, should business people just chase the money? 
Well, I think for Asian business people, there's going to be plenty of opportunities and plenty. If anything, you could invest in Baba under the conditions that they like show more respect. If you really believe in their internal team and ability to westernize Boba, like they could show more respect. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? But yeah, obviously, I think in 2024, there's a lot of other Asian founders to invest in or, or just companies that are completely like just not being slightly ignorant or disrespectful towards being Asian. So why be involved in something that's even going to take a mental space like that? As a, I'm speaking strictly as an Asian investor deploying Asian capital. Another question, last question. David, how ubiquitous is Boba considered? Because the more ubiquitous and a staple an item is, the more it's going to be used or served by different people. So I don't think Boba's at the point yet where anybody can serve it without saying anything about Taiwan or saying anything about Asian culture, right? But there are certain products out there like pizza, burgers, like obviously no one owns that. Yeah. Like it's not from, you know, those have just been around so long. Everybody can serve you, them, but they still shouldn't diss on other burger and pizza spots. You know, for me, there's the way the world is and there's the way like what the right thing is to be. And I know that um, things that are Chinese correlated, Taiwanese, whatever you want to talk about, like, they don't have the best branding, like like I said earlier, compared to Japan. So when you look at a lot of like white people when they do Japanese products, they tout that they make it in Japan or they learn from Japanese masters. But when it comes to a lot of Chinese or, you know, in this case, Taiwanese things, they try to hide it. Mm. So I guess like, you know, I, I get it because they're looking at the way the market is and they're like, oh, there's this great Chinese thing, but people think Chinese people are bad somehow or don't fully trust them as much as Japanese. So we got to hide it. So I could get that from a purely like mechanical, like ruthless perspective. But obviously me as, as a Chinese person, I'm like, hell nah, we got to create, you know, quality products and represent it too to, to, to combat that. To not like, but you know, like I said, for the whites or wherever they are, they like they're more going with, with how the world is. They're not trying to change the world or like improve anything for a group of people, branding wise. Right, right. So, anyways, you guys, let us know in the comments down below. I know that we on our channel and the audience, there's going to be differing of opinions. Again, let me reiterate. I agree with Simu's line of questioning. I agree with his concerns. I think he always speaks up constantly about things, and he's always representing uh, Asian and Asian Americans. Uh, in almost everything that he does. Again, I think a non-Asians can serve Asian products, but they got to show more respect right out the gate and show reverence, and they cannot be dissing it the way they did. That was their mistake. It does feel columbus -y or colonialist-esque. Yes. But yeah, you can argue how bad that is nowadays because I get it. In 2024, there's this whole backlash against the hyper-wokeness of the past several years, and then that's getting wrapped up in, 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 in this whole context, and that's why so many people are writing diatribes, but at different levels. Hey, sell what you want, but people are going to say what they want. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching the Hot Pop Boys. Uh, subscribe for more, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.